Hello, my dear friends, how is it going? I'm Mario Theriger, and today I'm here to say farewell. <laughs> if you are watching this video, I have abandoned social media networks for some time now. But before I have decided to do that, at my Instagram, I have given people the opportunity to anonymously ask me or to say anything they ever wanted to ask or say to me before I left for good. Uh, this was the video of my invitation to completely go for it. Hello, my sweet kinky little devils. I'm fucking the fuck off out of here. Everything you need to know about that, check my latest post here on Instagram. But for now, I'll leave you a link where you can ask me anything you ever wanted to ask me, say anything you ever wanted to say to me. You can even roast me if you like, if that makes you feel better. So use that link, it's completely anonymous. I have absolutely no idea who, who you are, who it is, who is asking me the things you want to ask. So go ahead, have fun, and I'll answer all your questions or anything you write in there, anything you send me through that link. I'll answer on a, on a YouTube video at the end of this year, so be attentive to my YouTube channel. <laughs> and well, I see you when I see you, and I wish you all good holidays and a happy new year, and many blessings to you. <laughs> Thank you for everything, thank you for today, and until we meet again. Well, uh, I did receive a lot of anonymous messages, and many of which were not specifically questions for, or, or, or anything of the sort, but people showing appreciation for me and my work, uh, showing their love and friendship, which was quite welcoming, and obviously I also enjoyed that. I mean. Who doesn't like to be loved and appreciated? <laughs> uh, that was not the aim of this invitation, but I won't complain. But it is refreshing, actually, because it shows the type of people following my work, and uh, there's a lot of wonderful people who really care, and uh, that's very heartwarming. <laughs> it does give me hope in humanity and a different perspective on people. Despite the awful things we do to each other and to the planet and other living persons, there's a lot of goodness still and I'm trying to focus more on that. <laughs> but anyway, um, there were some questions and messages which um, today I would like to express myself towards those messages and I take the opportunity to answer for those who were asking, of course, why I'm leaving social media networks. Uh, for those who might fear I leave the online world for good, worry not. I'll keep doing videos for YouTube and uh, I'll be at the Patreon platform as well. Uh, I also have a little new music project, <laughs> but I will keep it hidden uh, for a, a variety of reasons. And I let people find it for themselves because it's more of a personal project to express myself to myself. Something to keep me busy and to give me some joy while creating something. And I warn you, that music project may not be what you might think it is. I'm aiming to create a new music genre of sorts. Anyway, um, I've, let all, I've left <laughs> all other social media networks. Uh, not just because it is a lot of people I have maintained uh, conversations with every day, almost 200 people I spend every day answering stuff, and other people asking me all sorts of things to add up to all the others, and um, it's just overwhelming. But it is also the fact that I'm tired of relationships and connections in the online world. It's not real life, and I've spent far too much time living in this online realm instead of enjoying actual life out there. Uh, as I said on an Instagram post, uh, this decision of living isn't about you, or I'm not mad at you. <laughs> this is solely all about me. I do need to get out of this online world as much as possible. Again, it's not just the insane amount of messages and conversations. I speak with over a hundred, almost 200 people a day, plus new daily messages and almost 3,000 still to read on just one of my emails, <laughs> to name a few interactions, right? Um, I'm absolutely tired. I am saturated of this online reality where people seem to prefer to dwell. 
so many conversations, so many interactions, most of which quite the positive ones actually, yet the feeling of loneliness is crushing. We are closer yet ever more distant. I want and I will live in the real world with real physical contacts with actual people in front of me. I won't take part in this global collective madness anymore, uh, at least as little as possible. I'm out to live life away as much as possible from this online realm, which is like a lake, right? Where you see reflections and mirrored images of people, but you cannot touch them, you cannot feel them. And at the end of the day, it all dissolves in your hands and you just sit alone, looking at the surface of the water, waiting for something that isn't coming. It is maddening and frustrating. Mind you that I do understand the positive social aspects of the internet. It connects many people, especially loved ones from afar. But right now, this isn't for me. I want to preserve my sanity, allow myself to feel every emotion and continue the craft. I do hope you understand this and I know many of you will understand this. Last year, I've met many people in actuality and it was awful <laughs> to see that. Uh, even so, people prefer to communicate a lot more in the online world rather than continue to do the effort to create friendships uh, in real life. The great majority of people are far too deep into this online world or realm and, and are becoming prisoners, completely enslaved by this virtual system. It's scary. And to me, uh, it's funny in a way because I used to be, for many decades, quite misanthropic. And now that I want to get closer to human beings, people are behaving quite in a misanthropic way, becoming what I used to be. It wasn't healthy for me and I'm trying to create real connections. But now it seems people don't want real connections. Uh, most just want to be behind a screen. Enough of this rant, uh, let me start answering some questions. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Uh, I have entered the online world back in 2009. I'm still one of those kids that grew up without internet for a very long time. I was 15 when I had my first contact with the internet, but only at 2021, I have really started to be more active with a blog. I've never been to Yahoo, and I assure you I've never made that sound either. Sadness is a um, powerful emotion, but so is happiness and the feelings and emotions given by the pleasures of life. I don't know if sadness is something that tends to stick around in our spirit and we carry it through the cycles of existence, but generational trauma, however, is real. Um, there are several traumatic events that tend to pass from generation to generation. Trauma is a powerful force a very nasty, crispy crust that tends to stay on our DNA memory, but also in certain attitudes, body language, behavioral patterns, several forms of expression, uh, it is passed down through the generations. Good thing I also know Spanish. Books I can recommend to better understand animism. That's a good question because Animism is a perception of the world and life, and it tends to become a way of living in a better world. <laughs> it would always be preferable for an animistic perception to, of, of, of reality to be passed down through the generations, right? As I've expressed on a previous video, animism is very much learned, like any other perception of life and of the world uh, that surrounds us, of course. Uh, for, uh, however, for us of many modern societies and our upbringing not having been within an animistic society, we would do well to listen to the wisdom of living animistic societies, especially of indigenous peoples. But there are, of course, very good books. I think one of the best overall general perspectives on animism to get people started is, without a doubt, of course, Graham Harvey's Animism, Respecting the Living World. It's a very good book. Uh, that one will certainly take you on an interesting journey. <laughs> there are several books on animism, but often dealing with quite specific pockets of 
ethnic groups or communities, which we should obviously definitely read to understand different perspectives, but also to notice similarities. For instance, I find it very interesting and useful Eduardo Viveiro de Castro's works on the anthropology and the ethnology of Amazonian societies. There's David Abrams' approach to animism, which is quite refreshing and fluid, and I think it is a good approach for readers who want, from time to time, to jump to a more general overview of animism that is less pragmatic and less academic, let's say. I mean, there's a lot of books you should definitely check, and I'll put them here <laughs> on the screen. I have enjoyed them, and I think all of them have something very useful to contribute, and not only to better understand, um, contribute to a better understanding of animism, but also to dive in into the deep wisdom of several indigenous societies. Because animism is inherently indigenous, in my opinion, of course. The more a community of human persons walks towards an indigenous way of life, the better it will understand animism. On the other hand, uh, the more we advance towards a civilizational environment, the more we lose an animistic perception of the world. And uh, we keep seeing this actually quite well. Uh, for instance, as an example, in, in African cultures, especially of Central and Southern African cultures, which in their history have been going back and forth in and out of an indigenous society and a civilizational society. And between one and the other, there's a lot of differences in their um, their perceptions of the world and their behaviors towards such perceptions. But I, I can develop more on that on some other video. Well, my apologies, but I'm not going to teach anything one-on-one -on -one at this time. Uh, not only because I am leaving social media networks and uh, trying to <laughs> spend as little time as possible online, but also I still think YouTube is a very good platform that can be used to exchange information, right? And I do prefer to keep doing videos for free um, to reach a, a, wide, a wider audience because I think it's, uh, it's a better way. It's better that way. So everyone might have access to information. Surely, I have Patreon, <laughs> but what I do at Patreon sooner or later ends up here on videos at YouTube for anyone to see. People at my Patreon do have exclusive access to some stuff, but one way or another, what I develop there will also come here into YouTube in video format. I never liked the idea of a limited access to information based on one's economic power. It's a highly unfair privilege when the more money people have, the more access to information they have. Certainly, people who produce information, educate others, need an income, and obviously what people give me on Patreon does help quite a lot to both acquiring sources, but also to literally keep me alive. However, it's precisely through that help and keep on living that those who produce information, those who educate, should then give it away. If you take my meaning, right? I I'm probably not expressing this as well as the idea in my head, but I think you get the point, <laughs> hopefully. I think everyone should have access to information, regardless of their background, especially economic background. All right, quite a question. Um, let me try to be brief from, from now on, uh, because this is the, only the fifth question. <laughs> I think it is unhealthy to stick to the exact same beliefs for a long period of time. We are all meant to evolve, and if in a whole decade or more we still believe in the exact same things we did before, and uh, if we still have the same patterns and behaviors in life, there hasn't been a lot of effort to become a better person, I think. We do need to strive to become better versions of our previous selves from certain past situations. As I said before on other videos, I do not follow any path but my own, and that much is still something I believe in because I'm always building my path. I'm moving forward, and the more I learn, the more my perspective on things changes and evolves. And each individual perceives life in their own unique way. 
but is also obviously influenced by others and by more information that one comes about. And many people have different mood swings each day and many different identifications of the self according to the ways they feel and express themselves. So anyone can be anything and doesn't have to be forced to remain something uh, when it is no longer, it no longer make, makes sense, right? We should always go for the things that are meaningful to us for as long as they are meaningful. Can I call you for a coffee if someday I go to Portugal or come to Brazil and we go for a coffee and cheese bread? <laughs> yes, uh, you can call on me, whoever you are. I actually know a good place around here that has vegan cheese bread. So I'll be waiting. <laughs> More from Brazil to take ayahuasca. <laughs> That's an experience I would definitely like to try at some point in my life. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Hope you are doing well. <laughs> to improve our quality of life um, and to heal from trauma, that's something most of us strive to achieve, I think. In terms of trauma, I cannot possibly offer any sort of advice as each one of us has different traumas and the intensity of their impact upon us is different due to too many factors of our personal reality. Perhaps the best decision is to seek professional help to deal with such problems when they affect our mental health to the point that prevents us from enjoying life. There are many traumas we shall never heal from, but we can find mechanisms to better deal with them. And as such, we improve our quality of life. I think that is probably something that should be addressed because we live in a society full of the so-called spiritual influencers <laughs> and there's a lot of talk about healing. Reality is different. Uh, there's a lot of things we cannot possibly heal from, but well, that doesn't mean we should quit. It just means that it is important to take in mind that healing is not always something that can be achieved, but what we can truly do is to minimize the impact traumas have on us. As such, by minimi minimizing or mitigating the many negative aspects of life, we can improve our lives. It may not come to a point when we will feel 100% good with life because that's unrealistic. That's not how anything works, unfortunately. There will always be moments in life when we will feel like utter dog shit ran over by a fast moving truck without wheels, but we can try to mitigate a lot of harmful aspects of life and in the course of our existence we can feel a lot better than that we did before and we can learn to find the mechanisms to improve our mood whenever we feel more under the weather. Learning to read the runes, uh, well it depends, um, seeking for something more esoteric, there's plenty of material out there. I myself have a series of videos on my own esoteric approach to the runes to be rather to be used in divination methods. Please go watch it. <laughs> um, and, and seeking to learn how to read and write with them uh, from an historic, uh, historical approach. Uh, there's far fewer materials out there, unfortunately, but it is easily distinguishable from the esoteric approach. Are you in love? I'm sort of looking for love. Well, there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> Aliens are not the type of subject that I find interesting in any particular way, to be honest. Although cases of abduction by aliens and other creatures is a fascinating subject that has probably plagued humanity since there's been humanity. If we look into folklore as an example, we find several cases of being abducted by fairies, trolls, by spirits of all sorts, by the, the physical walking corpse of an ancestor, by hidden folk as well, and so on and so forth. There's a pattern here, I think. It's part of generational trauma caused by sudden disappearance of loved ones without any explanation. Looking at folklore, as I said, a great part of it deals with past traumas in relation to death caused mostly by sudden unexpected events people were simply not prepared for, such as famine and climate changes and natural disasters. 
a lot of people have disappeared without any trace. If we look into specific moments of human history, there's always a supernatural explanation for the unexplained, which in a way it gives people some peace of mind because it gives some reason for someone's disappearance. When the church during the Middle Ages and the modern period, as an example, started to turn their focus into alleged cases of witchcraft and diabolism, it caused mass hysteria and there's plenty of accounts of people either being abducted by the devil or by witches. In every community, when there's mass hysteria of this sort, there's plenty of cases of abduction by the very supernatural creatures the mass hysteria derives from. Same thing with aliens. Cases of abduction with aliens became more common throughout the 20th century, within a society progressively becoming more industrialized and uh, a perception of the future far more technologically advanced. There were new fears created since the First World War due to the competition of several nations to always be ahead of each other in terms of technological advancements, especially, obviously, turned to technology of destruction aimed to destroy human lives. This fear was increased during the Cold War and the, the global fear of a nuclear war that could wipe out humanity. There's even, uh, th th there's even a, a, a greater fear, which is a, a common enemy to all of humanity, a foreign enemy, an exterior enemy with a technology far more advanced than ours, to the point we cannot possibly do anything to stop it. Aliens. This has led to a new mass hysteria of fear of being abducted by such creatures. Now, this actually reflects on people's experiences through dream hallucination, or indeed spiritual experiences. Deep fears, deep traumas can be projected into people's experiences and people experiencing being abducted by the very creatures that take form in deep trauma. And I have no doubt that some people have experienced being abducted by aliens and they have lived it, they have seen it. And such images and experiences are quite vivid in their heads. The problem here is that, more often than not, these lived experiences and images of such creatures are psychological mechanisms to cope with trauma, the trauma of a real event. More often than not, sadly, very sadly, abduction by aliens or some other creature are images that the person has created to cope and repress a very deep trauma, often to repress cases of abuse by people they trusted, be those parents, siblings, and other close relatives. That's the real problem right there. To try to uncover the trauma that has been repressed by a fantasy that in itself is a mechanism of surviving trauma. All I read here is that I'm an imperfect human being with flaws. I'm sad now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, who knows the hundreds of thousands of realities we could have lived if we had been placed anywhere else and with contact with other completely different people. Sometimes I think about that, but I try not to, <laughs> not, not that much. There's a wonderful people out there right now watching this video. <laughs> and I think how things would be if I were there with you, how any of us would turn out to be and the things we would do. That's a hard question. Lord of the Rings is life. It's literally my whole personality. I'm joking, obviously, of course, but uh, I honestly can't think uh, of anything else. There's plenty of books I have read and each one of them offer a different perspective or there's always something that adds something new to our personality. Well, uh, not all of them, obviously. Twilight hasn't given me anything and no major impact on my person, but there's actually a book um, as one of many examples I could give that changed something interesting in relation to my work as an archaeologist, which is Claude Lucuto's The Return of the Dead, 
which made me rethink about our behavior towards the dead and why we give offerings to them and have built elaborate burials and filled them with material culture, with offerings, supposedly. It's hardly out of respect or indeed an idea of an afterlife, uh, but possibly more to do with the fear of the return of the dead. But that's something for another time. This person understands, <laughs> and uh, I am sure most of you do as well, of course. I see many of us are going or, or getting too tired of this online fantasy. I may start to be more active on YouTube than before, although the time I will gain by not being constantly on social media networks to answer people, I will most likely spend it on living more of life. Yes, I think that's it. As I said, I'll spend as little time as possible online, but still trying to continue with the same amount of videos a week every year on YouTube. At least that. I'm a sexy beast of a man. <laughs> Best compliment so far. Well, I am not against kindreds. I am not against the formation of groups that aim to create connectedness between communities. I am against group ideologies that aim to destroy connectedness and aim to repress people's right to express themselves the way they are and the ways they identify themselves. A group in itself is not a problem. It becomes a problem when their ideologies and practices are harmful to others and to themselves. There it is, again, uh, my deepest apologies, but indeed I have turned down every invitation for collaboration, podcasts, interviews, invitations of all sorts to, to take part on discussions, seminars, etc. I have a couple of reasons for that, which I can express on some other video someday. But right now, I really don't want to find more reasons to be stuck in the online world. If by hiddenry uh, we are talking about past pre-Christian belief systems of Northern and Northwestern Europe, it's still very hard to determine the types of magic that were actually done and their aim. But there's certainly quite a few cases of baneful magic, even though more concrete evidences are far more recent in history, between the 1500s and the 19th century, but such cases of baneful magic uh, do have some similar elements with pre-Christian belief systems. Uh, there's, al there's, there's always been uh, uh, what we could call destructive magic, pragmatic behaviors within traditional folk magic and animist, uh, animistic uh, systems of belief that aim to cause harm to something or someone. So naturally, baneful spells are a response to that reality. I think it is common sense, really. If there's a threat, there's a response. And I think, in this case, uh, it's always useful to study traditional folk magic to help us finding similar elements that have survived within the collective mentality of populations that reflect past belief systems. Thank you, kind stranger. Although I would like to take the opportunity to tell you that you owe me nothing, none of you. I know many of you have this feeling, you have said so on many occasions through comments and messages, but what I, what I do here is my choice, out of my own free will. If you want to be my patron and help me in some way, especially monetary, that's your choice, and I obviously appreciate and thank you for your help and support. However, no, that none of you owe me anything. Please do not feel obliged to give me anything in return. What I create is for you, it's yours. Do whatever you want with the information I have shared over the, over the years. <laughs> you owe me nothing at all. I'm afraid I will disappoint some people, but even though there's a reason, it has nothing to do with such a deity. It's simply an early advice I have followed from my best friend to submit videos at the middle of the working week because it's that day of the week after those first very stressful and hard days and right at the middle, closer to the end of the week, which is a time when people seek to find something to entertain them or a little pause from their daily life. 
So it's more in terms of creating that pause in the middle of the week to give something that may help people to relax a bit and have a cut on the agitation or on the accelerating pace provoked by work. Does a shift count? I mean, everyone under capitalism has a hard time, unless, of course, you are the head of a company and a multimillionaire. Okay, very well. Which is? <laughs> I think there is a good lesson to be taken here. Always speak out your feelings, even if the feelings are not mutual and nothing comes from it, and you, and you already know that, it's better to take it out of your chest and your mind. People at the end of their days, of their lives, often regret far more the things they haven't done rather than uh, the things they have actually done. Even if you already know someone is not into you, Tell them how you feel, but not in a creepy way, right? Uh, let it out and move on. It's better to say it because having that stuck inside you for the rest of your days will consume you because you will always be asking yourself, what if it made a change? There's indeed a rich body of mythology and folklore shared by Northern Portugal and Northwestern Spain, uh, which uh, in many points is also shared by the I by Irish folk traditions and myths, actually. Uh, it's something to be explored, perhaps, on future videos. And indeed, uh, there's plenty of these similar household, weather and nature spirits in several European cultures. So, these were the first questions, along with some more messages of love and appreciation for my work. I wasn't satisfied, so I gave people a second chance to go absolutely weird. My dear friends, I've been digging through your messages and I'm not disappointed. However, there was a lot of love and praise, which I am obviously <laughs> very grateful for. I appreciate that, but that's too much. <laughs> I am leaving, so I am giving you the opportunity to, do, say, to ask me anything you ever wanted to ask of me, anything you wanted to know about me. I am giving you opportunity to roast me. <laughs> you can roast me. You can just be weird. The world is your oyster. Go ahead. This is anonymous. This 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 thing right here. This link. It's completely anonymous. Go for it. Don't be afraid. Be very weird if you want. Be controversial. And then I will answer all these questions and all these whatever you wish to <laughs> to tell me. I will answer and show it on a final video on my YouTube channel at the end of this year, at the end, at, at the very end, at the very last day of this year. So go for it. Be fucking weird. <laughs> Translating here, I liked you before and you never knew. And I continue not knowing as this is all anonymous. <laughs> now, this person gets it. You could have indeed asked me anything and I would actually answer. Well, um, I'm more into role play to be honest, <laughs> and it can uh, vary quite a lot from something quite soft and romantic, let's say, and all the way to something, again, let's say, harder. <laughs> I'm up to play almost any role, as long as there's pleasure. And I I'm the kind of person that also gets pleasure from giving pleasure, and I do like a bit of pain involved as well. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, just like in Queen's album, A Kind of Magic from 1986, Pain is so close to pleasure, <laughs> although that's not really what it meant, what, what it means. I am not exactly sure what to answer here because at my Instagram I have done a kind of personal journal of my moods and I do have a lot of mood swings as well as different personal identifications. That's not the case here, but I think you ought to know something about myself because I get, I do get there's a lot of people that like me, really like me and, the, and like the person I am, but you have to remember that you are just seeing one version of, of me, which is here online. I do have severe episodes of dissociation to the point of physically seeing different realities and live them, and I feel them, leading me to construct different identities for specific realities, and this also leads to dissociative amnesia. My perception of reality is hard to describe. Suffice it to say, my perception of reality, of both time and space, is different. And personally, I do not see anything wrong with it because to me, in my own perception of life and existence, 
jumping and living in different realities is my existence. However, talking with other people and people pointing out the negative impact that this has on others or, or, or on them, I do understand that it's something not normal and bad and it causes a lot of trouble to anyone who deals with me and eventually to myself because while I live in different realities, others do not actually jump into those realities with me and do not live them like I do. For me, a day is a reality and the next day can very well turn out to be a completely different reality than the previous one, which not only leads me to forget things, but also leads me to act in a way as if I was a completely different person each day. I have only recently started to perceive my condition due to only very, very few people closer to me, people who care about me and are very patient, and they have started to act in a way that clearly they find it very strange and abnormal, many of my behaviors. I did not understand my behaviors as strange and abnormal because I live and experience certain realities and to me it is normal. So that's it. This is one of the reasons why it is extremely hard for me to make friends. Many times I'm only physically here for people, but I have found out that, for instance, doing videos helps me to focus on this reality and ground me among other things such as such as reading or having a very interesting conversation with someone which rarely happens because and understandably most people do not have the patience to stick around that long to actually know me and understand my dissociative conditions and i don't blame them at all no idea there it is i rarely bring to the next day things from the previous day unless of course uh, it's memories that have given me strong emotions but in terms of movies i do consume a lot of horror movies in search for a really good one that is able to give me intense emotions but again lord of the rings is definitely a movie that has given me so many strong emotions and i have seen it back when it was released actually um that even today I think about it. Visionary dreams isn't something I often have in the sense of perceiving that it is a set of images or information that give me some sort of information about things to come. I dream a lot, my nights are quite intense, but dreams of future events are rare for me. Well, hello there. <laughs> Someone from my country who wants to go out for a coffee um, with me. Little does she know, I am actually very weird. But well, whoever you are, give me a call, somehow. I need friends. Not sure if I understood this question correctly, but I think any work can be quite hard if we are overwhelmed by emotions of a personal nature that have nothing to do with the work we are doing. It's not easy to focus away from what psychologically troubles us and go ahead and do our work or our job or focus on any other thing actually for, for that matter. I am good at doing that uh, and uh, here I make a lot of videos and I act in a way clearly different from what I feel sometimes such as sadness, anger, depression, something of the sort. But my ability to distance myself from certain emotions and do my job doesn't come from a healthy survival mechanism. But it is a survival mechanism nonetheless. For particularly the whole of my life, I have repressed emotions and I have let myself be consumed by anger and hatred alone. This has to do with my background in dangerous and violent environments. I used to be quite a violent person. But I do know none of us should repress emotions and we should allow ourselves to live them and express them. There's a moment and time for everything, of course, but we have to remember to let it all out because it is not healthy to keep it all within and repress it because sooner or later it bursts and it can have pretty harmful effects. I am fluid on many aspects of self-identity, but I am fixed on my gender perception. 
I am a cisgender man. I do not have siblings, and as of the taping of this video, I am in the 55% and growing of people who are forced to live with their parents or in their parents' house due to the major house crisis we, are, we have been living in. And I'm one of the lucky ones, actually, because in my country, at least, last year, homelessness grew 19% compared to the previous year, and it's still growing. There's plenty of ways to house everyone, absolutely everyone, yet the government does nothing to fix these problems. That's what happens when you live in the second most politically corrupted European country. Um, ah, yes, and uh, I appreciate the compliment. However, as far as real archaeologists go, that's like finding a tool that is still in a somewhat distant condition in a shed that was burned to the ground. No, I haven't, uh, assuming you are speaking of s in sexual terms. Translating, heal yourself, but in a more derogatory way of expressing it and seek medical assistance, get out of your fantasy world, Signed, everyone who really knows you. <laughs> I mean, uh, this person isn't wrong in a way. However, I would argue that none of us really truly know anyone. You will never be the same person with everybody that you know and everyone you come across. We are different versions of ourselves with different people. It depends on how much we connect. Besides, the diversity of thought and identity is far too complex to catalog people. So no matter how much you think you really know someone, you don't. After all the things that have been said here about my own mental health, do you still wish me to be your boyfriend? If so, what does that say of your own mental health? <laughs> we should definitely talk. Send me a DM. Oh. Freya Eriksson, um, I remember you. It's funny, uh, I'm actually good at memorizing faces and I never forget them, ever, but I have a hard time memorizing names. But curiously, I do have a complete detailed image of you uh, just by reading your name. I haven't been on Facebook for two years now, a little more than two years. That's one of the very first social media networks I've left. But I do remember you and I thank you for your friendship and support. I wish you, I, I, I wish you all the best. I, I hope you are all right. Religion contains quite a bit of philosophical ideologies, but philosophical ideologies don't have to specifically contain a religious thought. Be that as it may, both have the capacity to shape one's perception of reality and everything that surrounds us, especially concerning an awareness of our own individual position in society and in the world. It can be quite dangerous to focus solely on a single religious thought or a single philosophical perception. Each of them is in itself someone else's perception according to their own experiences. And if we fall into the mistake of living life under someone else's perception of reality, we fail to truly appreciate existence itself. Perceptions of life are like books. We should be acquainted with as many as possible and formulate our own thoughts and build our own path according to what is more meaningful to our own existential consciousness. Everything in life is a multiplicity of realities with a wonderful diversity of experiences and we should experience as much as we can in order to better enjoy life, to know and seek out what gives us pleasure and to create respectful relationships with others which further enriches our own life. Uh, and uh, I hope between you and your girl girlfriend my channel is something like Arith Erger and Chill. It would be weird perhaps but not for me. I think it's safe to say that I listen to almost every type of music genre, uh, but I often range from alternative rock and shoegaze all the way to black death and do metal passing through punk rock and grunge quite a lot. 
lately I've actually been enjoying metalcore and um, post-black metal. Uh, my music influences to play something uh, more melodic or something more dark and heavy and slow on the guitar actually comes from a melodic death metal band from Finland called Kalma and from a doom metal band from Portugal called Desire. <laughs> I used to be very much into music uh, having had eight bands in total but I mean uh, there's always a couple of bands that really give us more inspiration, right? In a nutshell, I would say the bands that influenced me the most were Queen, Iron Maiden, NoFX, Alice in Chains, Kalma, Desire, Paradise Lost and Lord Belial. And finally, translating here, you seem like an interesting and wise guy. It's a shame you are vegan. <laughs> Eat a steak. <laughs> Trust me, being a vegan is the best part of me. Well, my dear friends, it was good while it lasted. It was fun. But I am indeed out of social media networks. I'll remain doing videos for YouTube and content for Patreon, of course. And I have a music project, as I've said. Perhaps one day I'll let you know all about it. But it's out there, actually, somewhere. You, you can actually find it and listen to that. Thank you all for your support and friendship over the years and uh, some of the relationships we have created, even the intimate ones. <laughs> I have met very interesting people of all sorts and backgrounds. I have met very wise people with very interesting life experiences. I have met people with similar struggles, but also different struggles that really puts things into perspective. I have met people who are just in it for the pleasure, which is totally fine. I've met very friendly people with very good advice to give me. I've met awful people as well who turned out to be quite a disappointment. Uh, I've met people who are total chaos uh, in a good way, but also in a dangerous way and also in a very amusing way. It's like being on the edge and jumping over it and who cares what happens next. I have met weird and peculiar people. I have met people who can either be if the last days of Rome were a person, but at the same time can be if a capybara was a person. A sort of interesting balance there. Thank you all for the, for the life experiences you have given me. Thank you for your support, your advice, your friendship, your love, the knowledge you, you have exchanged with me. And thank you for the good and the bad and the ugly. There's always a lesson to be had on everything, <laughs> on any interaction. Well, my dear friends, uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being in there. See you on the next video. And as always, thank you for today. Until we meet again, my dear friends.